Hey, what's up guys? Will here for GSM Arena. There are a lot of mid-range phones on the market and it's tough to keep them all straight, even if you have a specific price target. So we put together a list of this year's best mid-rangers at different prices, all the way up to 350 euros. Let's get into it. We'll start off with the least expensive phone on the list, the Realme 8i. It's going for just 160 euros, but it still packs a ton of value. The phone has a plastic frame, expected at this price, but the back is made of glass and is eye-catching. And on the front, there's a pretty decent LCD screen. It's large and has a very adaptive 120Hz refresh rate. The Realme 8i also has a large battery and did A-star battery life tests. The MediaTek Helio G96 chipset still holds up quite well in day-to-day -day tasks. It would do for occasional gaming too. As far as cameras go, the Realme 8i doesn't have an ultra-wide, but there's a macro cam, and the main cam's quality is actually pretty good even at night. Of course there are shortcomings here. There's just a single speaker, no splash proofing, and the charging speed is slow. But the Realme 8i still has plenty to offer, especially for the 160 euro price tag. Moving on to 200 euros, and we actually have two phones to recommend at this price. The first one is the Poco M4 Pro 5G, aka the Redmi Note 11T 5G in India. For 40 euros more than the Realme 8i, you get much speedier charging and stereo speakers. The build is made of plastic, but there's IP53 rated ingress protection against water and dust. The Poco has a 5000 mAh battery, and battery life is excellent. And the display of the phone is a large LCD with a 90Hz refresh rate and Gorilla Glass 3 protection. While the MediaTek Dimensity 810 chipset is not really meant for gaming, it's slightly more powerful than the Helio G96, and of course there's 5G connectivity. On the back, the Poco M4 Pro 5G has a main cam and an ultra-wide, and the quality is decent for the class. Overall, the Poco M4 Pro 5G is a pretty well-rounded smartphone, and it stands out in its 200 euro price category. However, our next pick is also 200 euros. It's the Xiaomi Redmi Note 11 S. It's a tie for this price point because it brings a different set of upsides and downsides, and that's worth considering depending on your needs. For one thing, the Redmi Note 11 S's display is smaller than the Poco's, but here is an AMOLED, with again a 90Hz refresh rate. With an AMOLED, you get deeper blacks, and this panel is also pretty bright and color accurate. The Redmi is slightly more compact than the Poco, and it has a glass back with a plastic frame. The phone is also IP53 rated against dust and water. While both the Poco and the Redmi Note 11 S have loud stereo speakers, the Redmi seem to have nicer sound quality. Another difference is the chipset. Unlike the Poco, the Redmi Note 11 S brings a Helio G96, just like the Realme 8i. So it's slightly less powerful, and there's no 5G support here. But when it comes to the cameras, the Redmi has the upper hand. Its 108 megapixel main cam does a nice job. Plus you get an ultra wide and a macro cam. The battery life is excellent, and charging speed is solid too. Both are comparable to the Poco. So in the end, the Redmi Note 11 S stands out with this AMOLED display and nice speakers and photo quality for 200 euros. Now we've hit the 250 euro price point, and our top choice here is the Realme 9 Pro. The main upgrade you'll find here is the chipset. The Realme 9 Pro packs a higher tier Snapdragon 695 5G, which provides solid mid-range performance and of course 5G connectivity. Another cool feature is that you can get the phone with a special finish that changes color in sunlight. The phone isn't clearly better than the previous ones on the list. It doesn't have ingress protection or stereo speakers. But still, there's a lot to like here. The battery life is excellent, and the charging speed is fast enough. And you get a large LCD panel on the front with an adaptive 120Hz refresh rate. The camera setup includes a main cam, an ultra-wide, and a macro cam, and the quality is solid for the class. However, even though the chipset is more powerful than the ones we've seen so far, you still don't get 4K video recording. So overall, the Realme 9 Pro isn't perfect, but it brings some nice features for 250 euros. Our next category is slightly more expensive at 280 euros, and we again have two phones to talk about. The first one is the Xiaomi Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G, aka the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G in India. This phone brings an elegant glass design with a matte finish, and IP53 splash proofing too. Like the Redmi Note 11 S I mentioned earlier, the Pro has an AMOLED display that's bright and color accurate, but this one is larger and has a faster 120Hz refresh rate. The battery life of this phone is great, 
But where it stands out from the less expensive phones on this list is its much faster charging speed with a bundled 67 watt charger. And there's a nice pair of stereo speakers. And like the other phones I've mentioned so far, there's a headphone jack too. Just like the Realme 9 Pro, the Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G has a Snapdragon 695 5G chipset, and it provides solid mid-range performance. But again, it wouldn't support 4K video capture, like higher tier chipsets would. The Note 11 Pro 5G has a 108 megapixel main cam, and its performance is just okay. The processing leaves more to be desired. That's paired with an ultra-wide and a macro cam. So the Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G is a nice, well-rounded package. Its weakest point is the camera quality. In contrast, our other choice at 280 euros provides standout cameras for the class. I'm talking about the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G. Its cameras include a 48 megapixel main cam, a macro, and an ultra wide. And the photo quality is superb for this price, both in the day and at night. Plus, it's the first phone we've seen so far in this list which can record 4K video, and the quality there is top notch too. The 4K video recording is made possible by the Exynos 1280 chipset which provides both 5G connectivity and good mid-range performance, from everyday tasks to gaming. The design of the Galaxy A33 is a plastic one, but the matte panel feels nice. And you get actual IP67 rated waterproofing here too. The display is an AMOLED. It's smaller than the Redmi's and the refresh rate is 90Hz not 120, but it's still quite good. And you also get a pair of nice stereo speakers. No headphone jack though. Another bonus of getting a Samsung phone is the extended software support for 4 OS upgrades and 5 years of security patches. The main downsides here are that while the battery life is good, it's not as great as on the Redmi Note 11 Pro 5G. Also, the charging speed isn't as fast, and you don't even get a charger in the box. But regardless, the Galaxy A33 is solid all around, and a nice choice if you're looking for a 280 euro camera phone. Next, we're moving on to 300 euros, and we have the Realme 9 Pro Plus. This phone brings a brilliant glass design, and like the Realme 9 Pro, there's the option for a unique photochromatic finish. There's no ingress protection here, nor is there a micro SD slot for expandable storage. The Realme 9 Pro Plus's display is a 90Hz AMOLED, protected by Gorilla Glass 5. It's the same size as the Galaxy A33's, and even though it doesn't get as bright, it's quite color accurate. For audio, there's a pair of stereo speakers, with nice quality, as well as a headphone jack. The chipset of the Realme 9 Pro Plus is a MediaTek Dimensity 920, and the performance is great. It's among the best in its class, and there's support for 5G connectivity and 4K video recording too. On the back, there's a 50 megapixel main cam, paired with a macro and an ultra wide. The quality is great for the class, both during the day and in the dark. The Realme 9 Pro Plus also has competitive battery life, and the charging speed is really fast. So overall, the Realme 9 Pro Plus has a lot going for it, and it stands out with its chipset and camera quality, plus the fancy design. But for a bit more money, 315 euros, you could get the Samsung Galaxy A52 S 5G, which may not be a spring chicken, but is still incredibly competitive. We actually prefer last year's Galaxy A52 S over the new model, the Galaxy A53, for reasons I'll get to in a second. Unlike the Realme 9 Pro Plus, you don't get a snazzy finish here, but the build is solid and comfortable. Plus, you get IP67 rated dust and water resistance. The Galaxy A52 S gets extended software support from Samsung. At this point, it wouldn't last as long as with a new release, but still. The A52 S's AMOLED display is nice. It's quite bright and has a fast 120Hz refresh rate. And together with the stereo speakers, you get a headphone jack, something missing from the Galaxy A33 and A53. Another thing you get here that you wouldn't with newer Samsung devices is a bundled charger in the box. And the battery life on the Galaxy A52 S is quite good too. The phone's Snapdragon 778G chipset is another nice feature. It's much more powerful than the new Exynos 1280 used by the A33 and A53, providing excellent performance for a mid-ranger, and 5G connectivity too. And last but not least are the cameras. There's a 64 megapixel main cam, plus a macro and an ultra wide, and they outperform both the Galaxy A33 and even the new A53. While the Galaxy A52 S isn't the latest release, it's still quite competitive at 315 euros. It's one of the best Samsung mid-rangers out there. Now we've made it to our final, most expensive category, and for 340 euros, our pick is the Poco X4 GT. 
For the extra cash, you'd expect more power under the hood, and the X4 GT delivers. It packs a flagship killing MediaTek Dimensity 8100, which outperforms pretty much all of the other mid-range silicon. The thermals are great, and there's 5G support too. This performance upgrade comes with some trade-offs, and one of them is that the phone is made of plastic, without ingress protection. And the other is that the screen is not an OLED, but an LCD, and not a particularly great LCD either. Though one of its standout features is the extra fast 144Hz refresh rate. The Poco X4 GT does have a pair of stereo speakers for your audio, and a traditional headphone jack too. And the X4 GT has competitive battery life alongside fast charging. The Poco's cameras include a 64 megapixel main cam paired with an ultra wide and a macro cam, and the photo and video quality are pretty good. The Poco X4 GT is a flagship killer at heart, and even though it doesn't bring an OLED screen or an IP rating, for 340 euros, there's a ton of bang for your buck here. So there you have it, guys. Our picks for the best mid rangers you can get this holiday season, up to the 300 euro price limit. Thanks for watching, and see you on the next one.